Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather around the table of the Lord as one community on this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, the day of rejoicing. And we beg for the grace that we may truly see the gift of joy that only God can give us. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the Feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt, and the steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, 
the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. De then the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord God keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus, Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Kapag may lakad ang magkakaibigan at hindi makakasama yung isa, ano ho bang ginagawa natin? Tinutuloy ba yung plano o hindi? Siguro, para sa iba, tinutuloy nila. Pero meron din namang iba na hindi itutuloy hanggat kumpleto ang lahat. Bakit? Kasi sasabihin nila, masaya, mas masaya pag mas masaya kapag kumpleto, no? Pag hindi kumpleto, hindi masaya. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now in the third day of sun, third Sunday of Advent, which we also call Gaudete Sunday, a Sunday of rejoicing, a day of joy. And looking into our readings, where does that joy come from? Saan ba natin na makikita yung kagalakan na yun? If we look into our readings for the Sunday, it only offers us one thing. Joy means wholeness. Joy means fullness. Kaya kung babalikan ho natin yung halimbawa natin kanina, yun yung, mab, yun yung mababaw na paliwanag kung ano ibig sabihin ng ating mga pagbasa. Pagkumpleto, mas masaya. Pagbuo ang barkada, mas masaya. But let us differentiate between joy and happiness. Kasayahan at kagalakan. If the difference between the two is clear for us, then we would also understand the difference between wholeness and completeness. Kaganapan at kabuan. What would be the difference between joy and happiness? It is as simple as the difference between what you experience and what you carry. 
happiness is felt, happiness is experienced, joy is what we carry, joy is what we share. Happiness may be fleeting, but joy is unceasing. Looking at the difference between the two, we would now understand the joy that our readings would explain. It is not about being complete. It is about being whole. A person may be complete, but not necessarily whole. And a person may be incomplete, but he can still be whole. Kaya nga nung tinanong si Jesus nung mga alagad ni Juan, ano ba yung palatandaan na maibabalita namin? At ano yung sinabi ni Jesus? Nakakakita ang mga bulag. Nakakarinig ang mga bingi. Napapalinis yung mga ketongin. That was the sign that Jesus was telling John's disciples. Restoration is being made. Wholeness is being offered. Thus, it is a great day of rejoicing. But let us not simply look at the deformities that are being restored. Let us try to understand why such examples were given by Jesus. Yes, it is true that during those times, Jesus was healing those who were blind, those who were deaf, those who had leprosy. But it is not just about the healing that Jesus is relaying to John's disciples. It is the experience of these people of what it is to be lacking. Yung pakiramdam ng kakulangan. Yung pakiramdam ng hindi buo. They have a physical experience of what it is not to be whole. Sila yung may karanasan ng pagkukulang o kawalan. At kapag alam mong may kulang, nandun din yung pakiramdam ng nakaasa. Pero yung pinaramdam ni Jesus sa kanila ay hindi lang yung pakiramdam ng nakaasa. Pero yung pinaramdam ni Jesus sa kanila ay tunay na pag-asa. And that is the difference between wholeness and completeness. Kaganapan at kabuuan. When we feel incomplete, we are at the mercy of others. We are at the mercy of those people that would complete what is lacking in us. Nakaasa tayo sa kanila. But wholeness is derived from the hope that even if you are incomplete, it will not define our very being. Kaya nga minsan, di ba, nakakarinig tayo ng mga kwento na mga bulag at sinasabing kung kailan sila nawalan ng paningin, dun sila mas naging mulat. Dun sila mas nakakita. Kung kailan sila nagkaroon ng kapansanan, dun nila mas napahalagahan yung mga bagay-bagay. But these experiences does not come in an instant. Kung tatanungin natin yung mga kapatid natin na may ganong karanasan, hindi naman ho nila sasabihin na agad-agad, yun kaagad yung karanasan nila. Agad-agad namulat sila. Agad-agad napahalagahan nila yung mga bagay-bagay. It will take time. For some, it may be quick. But for others, it may take a long period of time. And this is what our second reading would remind us. Patience. We cannot hasten the process. It is in through the process that we will understand that we would need to shed a lot of things. Dahil kapag minadali yung proseso, hilaw yung karanasan, mababaw lang. We may experience happiness but the joy that we need to carry will not be there. Are we complete? Are we whole? Where is our joy derived from? Or are we simply happy? Hopefully we can beg for this grace. As the Christmas season draws near, hopefully we may find the true meaning, the true source of joy. Baka 
dumating ang pagkakataon na madaliin nating hanapin yung kagalakan na iyon. Pero gaya din ng paalaala sa atin, hayaan nating daanan ng proseso, daanan ng mga karanasan. Dahil sa pagdaan natin sa mga karanasan na iyon, sa pagdaan natin sa mga proseso na iyon, doon natin maaalis yung mga bagay na hindi natin kailangan. At doon natin matatagpuan yung tunay na kagalakan na tanging Diyos lang ang makapagbibigay. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right, the right hand, hand of God, God the Father, Father Almighty. From, From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Father promised to send his Son into the world as our Savior. As we prepare for his coming at Christmas, let us offer our prayers to the Father who gives bread to the hungry and sets prisoners free. For every intention, you will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may await the Lord coming with hope and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have closed their minds to the good news may return to the community of faithful let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who trust in the Lord may not lose heart, but be renewed in faith no matter what they suffer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That in our community strangers, widows and orphans may be supported by our generosity and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, as it celebrates its 85th founding anniversary and Pi's Day 2022, be given the necessary graces to continue its mission to advance the welfare of its members and the development and prestige of the civil engineering profession and to be a dynamic force in nation building and that the civil engineers be given the guidance, knowledge, and wisdom as they practice their profession to contribute to the development and progress of our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may find eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we lift up to the Lord our personal intentions, remembering all the people are asking for our prayers and for all the people whom we promise to pray for. Most loving Father, hear the petitions of your people, waiting in faith and hope for the coming of our Savior, whose splendor brings us everlasting joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters, that may sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design You formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sunset setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to invite you for our upcoming Simbang Gabi and Misa de Gallo schedules coming December 15 to 23. Ang mga simbang gabi po ay gaganapin natin sa ganap na ikawalo ng gabi. At mula po December 16 hanggang 24, ang ating Misa de Gallo ay sa ganap na 4.30 ng madaling araw. Sa bispiras po ng Pasko, December 24, our Christmas Eve Mass will be at 8 p.m. And our Christmas Day Masses will be at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. On New Year's Eve Mass on December 31, to be presided also by our Archbishop of Manila, the Mass will be at 8 p.m. And on New Year's Day, January 1, 2023, 2024, our Masses will be at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks and be to God. Oh